Um, come and talk about the health portfolio, which seems to be an urgent need of a transfusion and injection of money for all variety of reasons. We're joined by a Nationals front bencher and policy spokesperson on health, Dr. Shane Retty. Shane, great to have you on the show again. How's it going? Hey, Mike. Good to speak with you. Uh, doing fine, thank you. We're head down, just working really hard in, in this last sprint, but, uh, but doing fine. Thank you for asking. Well, what are you doing at the moment yourself? Uh, what's your responsibility to go around? Um, you're, in, you're the candidate for Northland? Uh, candidate for Whangarei electorate. Whangarei. And so uh, right. I'm, out in the, yeah, I'm out in the community uh, every single day uh, meeting with constituents. Uh, we had Meet the Candidates, had another Meet the Candidates uh, last night. So really busy with the campaign part of a local campaign as well as leading out our national health response. Well, and that's the other thing I was going to ask you about. As a leading front bencher, Shane, and obviously health being one of the three or four top issues of the campaign, do you have to go around the country as well? Yes, I do. Uh, roughly once or twice a week, uh, I have national events. So last week, it was the Diabetes Forum Meet the Candidates. Uh, that was in Auckland. And then uh, this week, it will be the Heart Foundation uh, Meet the Candidates again in Auckland. So roughly once or twice a week, uh, I need to leave the electorate and, uh, and do national uh, responsibilities uh, around the country. Mm. I was just thinking, um, for people like yourself who are on both sides of the divide and the front benches and, and the key spokespeople, you, you wouldn't have a day off, would you, once this campaign started? Look, even before the campaign started, uh, you know, we were effectively campaigning the day after the last election. Uh, it steps up uh, in this regulated period. One part falls away, so the legislative requirements you have being in Parliament, uh, obviously Parliament rose uh, about two weeks ago, so that... that falls away so I no longer uh, need to navigate the goat track down to Auckland and then fly down to Wellington uh, you know twice a week uh, so that part is reduced but the campaigning part more than fills that up. All right um, you last night where were you when you saw the News Hub poll or were made aware of it? Uh, it was just before I went out to meet the candidates uh, last night that I quickly saw the uh, saw the poll result. And what was your initial impression of that when you saw that poll result? It's the first time I think I've seen the National Party above 40%. Mm, I, I was pleased and then immediately I got back to my work which was to uh, present uh, our policies and uh, our vision uh, to the meeting uh, last night. So, so pleased but then straight back to work, you know, we'll take nothing for granted. There's still some runway to go and I was straight back into work but, but, but pleased for what we saw. Okay, all right. Now, three years ago, that would have been exactly the reverse. So you would have been looking at a poll that was just disastrous uh, for the National Party. Tell me, thinking back three years ago, because this is what Labor candidates presumably are going through at the moment, what were you thinking a month out from the last election when the poll results were almost exactly reversed and it was obvious the tide was going out for National? Uh, I was thinking this is going to be hard work, but it didn't change the things that you do each day. You get up, you get out on the hustings, uh, you promote the policies, you think deeply about what the opposite team is suggesting. Uh, you think deeply about what a vision for the future would be, uh, but you know that you have less wind behind you. Uh, you know that it's an even more uphill battle uh, when you have poll results that aren't, uh, aren't, aren't going in your favour. So uh, it, it makes it that, that bit tougher. Uh, but you put on your big pants, you put on your big face, and you get out there and do the work anyway. But you just don't quite feel that wind behind you like, like we might have here. Yeah, no, I mean, I've been on both sides of that, I have to say, Shane, and there is a psychological impact when polls show you this far behind um, and you know you're not going to win. Um, I imagine when you look at the energy of the Labour candidates opposite, we had Willie Jackson on the show yesterday, sort of that came through as sort of part of our interview with, with Willie yesterday. Do you get the feeling that they are, despite they would have fronted up last night, I guess you're up against Willow Jean Prime, eh, or somebody in, in that seat, um, that they don't quite have the same energy levels they had three years ago? Yes, I do notice that, and other commentators have as well. I think Corinne Dan reported it in the past 24 hours, 
and uh, media were reporting it over the weekend that um, uh, Hipkins uh, didn't seem to have energy. In fact, uh, some, I think, were reporting him as glum. So that, that puff, as I say, that wind behind you goes out of your sails a bit, and this is, this is what we're seeing uh, with, with the other, other team as well. They front up. Uh, it's our job. It's our role to present, but you just get a sense of enthusiasm, passion, and excitement behind the words uh, or an absence of if things aren't going so well. Um, Wangarei itself, which you're standing for, um, typical provincial city in lots of ways, same problems I imagine experienced in the Hamiltons, the Hastings, uh, the Palmerston Norths as, as you've got in Wangarei. Um, what are the key issues that are affecting your constituents? I mean, you can. You, I, I'm, I'm sick of listening to the media tell us what the issues are. What have you picked up from the ground as to what your constituents are most thinking about? What will affect their vote? Yeah, so if I do, do the look back and the look forward, the look back is uh, ongoing anger that Marsden Point was axed. Uh, oh, yeah. the, the government yeah. did not lift a finger to support or offer any assistance to Marsden Point, and that sits right in my electorate. And then we, we all paid the later consequence of uh, increased asphalt prices, uh, in, increased bitumen prices, asphalt prices, uh, increased CO2. Suddenly, oh, goodness, Marsden was providing CO2 to Bok in the facility next door, uh, sulfur for fertiliser. Uh, they were receiving a multi-million dollar uh, water subsidy, which then dropped on to the Whangarei ratepayers. So there's still a lot of anger with Marsden leaving this electorate. Uh, the four lanes... Uh, the holiday highway that Phil Twyford uh, wanted to quote, uh, that is such a vital lifeline for us that there's uh, anger on the look back that this was canned in 2017, uh, and of course three waters. Uh, all the documentation shows that Whangarei District Council would be the council most affected by three waters progressing, and uh, so the ratepayers are very unhappy uh, with that. But the look forward, I know the answer to this because I've surveyed the electorate three times this year, and by an order of magnitude, it's cost of living. Uh, by an order of magnitude. They're really struggling here. You know, like other provinces, but particularly East Cape and us, uh, we have areas of, of deprivation and areas of vulnerability, and they are really hurting with cost of living at the moment, uh, followed by crime and uh, then health and education. Th those are the issues that we're fighting this battle on here in Whangarei. Mm, I, I mean, the last election, just to bring uh, our listeners up to this, you lost uh, the seat by oh, a smidgen, 500-odd votes uh, was the majority that you lost by. Uh, 431, sorry, uh, you lost by. And you were far more popular than your party, so you got 6,000 more personal votes um, than the National Party recorded at that election. So you're obviously held in high regard. Um, Emily Henderson, who beat you, actually got 3,000 less votes than the Labour Party um, at the last election. I think you'll clearly win that. Um, Emily Han Henderson, is she... Um, what, what's her background? Have you found her to be an effective MP or not? Uh, look, I think that's for the people to decide, although they won't get to make that decision because she's not standing uh, in this campaign uh, anymore. She's uh, relinquishing uh, the seat. So that's really for the... the oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, let me... I didn't, I didn't catch up with that. Has she... She's not standing again? Correct. Yes, she's resigned. She won't be standing again. Yeah. Oh, I was not aware of that. But she's only, a, she's only done three years as an MP. Is that right? That, that's correct. Yep. So uh, Labour have had to find done. another candidate for the Wangarei seat this election? That is correct. Is that an existing MP or have they brought in someone new? Uh, they jettisoned, jettisoned in uh, Angie Warren-Clark from Tauranga.